black holes, celestial objects with such an extreme if not infinite density that they warp the space-time around them so that anything that gets too close gets trapped forever. The border of no return is called the Event Horizon, and beyond this border not even light can escape. Just outside the Event Horizon you get this curious effect called gravitational lensing, where whatever is behind the black hole appears stretched and contorted. This happens because the light that is cast from an object behind the black hole may do a partial orbit before reaching your eye. A disk of superheated gas and dust whirls around the black hole, and some of this matter is spewed out at the poles as a beam. Being near a black hole will generally result in a bad time. But they look cool, so let's create one. By default, everything you draw in the draw event is drawn to a surface called the application surface, which is later drawn to screen. GameMaker gives you moderate control over this surface, letting you disable it just in case you'd like to draw it manually with fancy effects and whatnot. You do, however, not have any control over the depth buffer of the surface. And what is the depth buffer? It is a hidden buffer that accompanies all surfaces unless you manually turn it off. This keeps track of what is drawn in front of what, and prevents faraway objects from drawing above nearby ones. This buffer cannot be copied from the surface, and the only way to access it is to draw to the original surface with the Z-testing turned on. But what if you want to use the application surface as a texture while taking the application surface's depth buffer into account? The solution is actually pretty simple. Copy the application surface over to another surface and use that as a texture while drawing to the application surface. This is what I will do today to create the gravitational lensing effects around the black hole. What I've been doing in the background to prepare is to simplify the planet system. I downloaded the source from the previous YouTube video, and I have replaced the enormous switch statement in the draw event with an array lookup. All the geometric shapes are now represented by matrices, and I've done some minor adjustments to the collision system in the step event to take this change into account. So with all of that out of the way, I will start creating my black hole. The first thing I'll do is to simplify the level slightly. I'll remove most of everything, and I'll leave two tori in the middle. So let's test this and see what it looks like. Okay, there we go. I'd like for the player to be a little higher up when the game starts. Yes. So now I want to create a black hole in the middle here. And the way I'm going to do that is to create a new list and I'll name this black hole list. DS list create just to keep track of all the black holes in the level and let's add a sphere to that list. Black holes. And I'll place the sphere at 0, 0, 0 with a radius of 150. And in the draw event I also have to duplicate this loop for the black hole list. Okay, so that planet in the middle there is what's going to be our black hole. Right now it looks the same as the other planets and that's because it's using the same shader. Um, so let's create a new shader and name it SH Black Hole. I'll duplicate the planet shader for now. Duplicate, there we go. So in here I can remove a lot of stuff. Uh, right now I am lighting the black hole. That doesn't make sense, so let's remove the rim lighting and the shading. Get rid of all of these. And I want to keep this for now, but I'll get rid of these and that. And in the draw event, um, I will give it the radius of the sphere. And let's test again. Okay, so now it's just drawing without any shading. Uh, let's give it a vec4, 0, 0, 0, 1. So now I'm drawing with a black color. And there we go, that's our black hole. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.
No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's make it draw something interesting. So right now it's it's using the, the same texture as other planets, but I would like to give this the application surface as a texture. Uh, but I also wanted to draw to the application surface. So I will have to create a new surface and I'll name this black hole surf. And in the draw event, I'll add a new if here. So if there are any black holes, then I would like to create the black hole surface. So if the surface does not exist, so now I am creating the black hole surface. And now I want to draw the application surface to the black hole surface. Let's see. Surface create. Okay. Uh, surface set target black hole surf. I'll clear the, um, the surface. Always clear your surfaces. And I may have to mess around with the GPU functions, but I'll just use draw surface application surface zero zero for now. Surface reset target. And let's use that as a texture. Surface get texture. And let's just look at it and see what it looks like. Draw failed. Um, that is because I'm not resetting the shader because I'm setting a shader here. That does not make sense. Nothing. Oh right, I am silly. I'm not reading from the texture. Let's try again. Okay, well that was a silly mistake, but at least now we are using the application surface as a texture for the black hole here. It doesn't look very black hole here right now, but let's mess around with the texture coordinate. Now, instead of sending in the texture coordinate from the vertex buffer, I would like to use GL position dot X, Y over GL position dot W. And this transforms the X and Y coordinates uh, into NDC space, which goes from minus one to one. I would like for it to go from zero to one. So I'll multiply by 0.5 and I'll add 0.5 and let's test it again. And if I have done it correctly, the sphere should be completely invisible. So it is invisible, but it's still there. And I can show you by just multiplying the RGB by 0.5 and let's test again. So there it is, uh, and it isn't transparent. It is actually sampling the application surface or rather the copy of the application surface at the pixel position on screen. So we can use this to displace the texture coordinate. And I have done some calculations here for the rim lighting. I have the view space position and I have the view space normal. And these are very useful. Uh, if I, for example, add the view space normal dot X, Y to the texture coordinate and let's see what that lo looks like. Okay. This looks very interesting and let's subtract it instead. Now, as you can see, displacing the texture coordinates along the view space normal makes the sphere look kind of like a lens. I would prefer more control over how the texture coordinate is displaced. I would like for the displacement to be zero at the edge of the sphere and one towards the center. So let's just visualize this dot product that I have uh, saved down here. And let's do a VEC4, VEC3, DP. As an alpha to one, and just look at what this dot product looks like. So, right now it's completely dark, and that is because this is negative. And let's test it with a 
yeah there we go so now you can see that the dot product is zero at the edge and one at the center and what if you use this to displace the uh, the texture coordinate okay this is starting to look very interesting now I think the edge here is a little too abrupt so let's try to let's see let's create a new float called offset what if we multiply it by itself and do offset times that okay that's a little smoother let's raise it to a higher power that's a power of four okay brilliant this is starting to look very good and I want to multiply this by something else let's do four times that and test again okay that's pretty extreme let's create a border I'll set that to one and I'd like to do in, in GML I would I would write if offset is larger than border set color to black but here I have uh, a function called mix dot RGB is equal to mix and I would mix between RGB and black which is vec 3 0 using the step function uh, so I'll set the lower bound to border and offset so that if offset is larger than border we will get this value otherwise we will get this value and now we have a black hole in the center let's do three there also I noticed that the edges are kind of jagged so let's try normalizing this here as well okay this is beautiful and I would actually like for the border to be a little thicker so let's do a float border thickness uh, let's give it a thickness of 0.1 and then I can use the smooth step function instead so let's do a border and border plus thickness so now it will be zero if offset is smaller than border and one if it is larger than border plus thickness and in between it will like smoothly interpolate so let's see what this looks like um border thickness okay well that didn't do much uh, it only made the border slightly more diffuse let's see here I want to normalize this outside here instead vec3n is equal to that and I'll do the use the n there and let us add a white border vec3 border color vec3 1 so now I want to mix between the gl frag color and the border color when offset is less than border minus border thickness it should be the regular color otherwise it should return the border color so okay now we have this white border around the black hole and that kind of represents the innermost layer of photons that are like orbiting for a long time some of them may escape while the rest of them like fall into the black hole so I would like that to be kind of reddish orangey okay there we go so that is actually all you need to do to create a black hole um, I would also like to create an accretion disk and that's the next thing I'll do 
Forgive me for fast forwarding here, but well, <laughs> this part is pretty tedious. Now, to generate an accretion disk, I want to first generate a vortex texture. I create a new texture called Accretion Disk Surf and draw a random noise pattern to it. To make it look like a vortex, I spin the texture coordinate around the center of the surface. Next, I want to draw this surface around the black hole. To begin with, I just draw the new texture to a flat plane around the black hole. Okay, so this is going to be a beautiful disc. I create a new shader to read from the vortex texture and create more interesting colors. This is where I can spend an eternity playing around with magic numbers. After trying a bunch of different combinations, I finally found a result I was happy with. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Um, however, there is one problem, and that is that the black hole is drawing over the edge and the accretion disk is not drawing to the surface be before drawing the black hole, so that needs to be fixed. So I have to draw the accretion, uh, accretion disk before creating the black hole surface. I would like for the accretion disk to show up in the distorted image, but I would also like for it to draw over the black hole. That means that I have to draw it twice, once before duplicating the application surface, and once after drawing the black hole. Okay, um, I don't like this border here. This is caused by the uh, accretion disk drawing twice on the outside and only once on the surface that is used to deform it. So what I want to do is to only draw it once out here, uh, but I would also like to draw it above the, uh, the sphere here, because if I disable this, let's remove this, you can see what happens if I only draw it once. Uh, it draws around the, uh, the sphere, but it does not draw over the sphere or the black hole. So let us mess around with the blend modes. Um, I'm going to use the same trick that I used for the shadows. 
So I'll use separate alpha. I'll set the uh, source to BM1, the destination to BM1, the source alpha to BM1, the destination alpha to BM0. And let us pass a custom alpha to the shader and I want to draw with an alpha of zero. So let's give it a uniform float new alpha and set the alpha to that. So now we are drawing with an alpha of zero. When drawing the uh, application surface to the black hole surface, I would like to use a blend mode of, let's see here, BM1, BM0. And when drawing this, I would like to sample the destination alpha. So let us use BM dest alpha, BM1, BM1, BM0. And here I would like to reset the alpha to one and test this and see what happens. I forgot to remove BM add here as well. Okay, let's test again. I noticed parts of black hole poking through the accretion disk. This happened because the alpha of the application surface is copied over to the new surface, which ends up confusing the part where we draw the accretion disk over the black hole. To fix this, I simply need to prevent the alpha of the application surface from being copied over. This is easily done with a blend mode. Okay, this is starting to look very good. Now the border is much less visible. So it looks like it's a continuous ring down here and then it draws over the sphere as well. So it draws both on the backside and on top without drawing twice at the same pixels. So this is starting to look pretty amazing. And let's make the, um, let's see, the border a little brighter, 1.4, 1.1, 1.8. Now let's make it a little thinner. And I'd like to raise this to a higher power as well. Okay, so let's create an, a more interesting accretion disk. Uh, I would like to create a vertex buffer. I'll duplicate the uh, disk. So what I want to do now is to give the accretion disk some thickness as well. Right now it's just a paper thin plane. I'd like to give it more of a double sided conical shape. And for this I have to create a new vertex buffer.
And there we go, now the accretion disk actually has some thickness to it. The next thing I'll do is to create the polar jets. To do this, I can basically just copy the accretion disk and scale it down in the x and y dimensions and way up in the z dimension to make it poke out of each pole. I also make it rotate way faster than the accretion disk. And that is basically how you create a black hole effect in GameMaker. In the clip currently on screen, I've added an additional layer of solids beneath the glowing layer to simulate multiple kinds of particles in the accretion disk. Now, only one question remains. What happens if we use a different shape for the black hole? Lo and behold, a black torus. A circular singularity. A ringularity, if you will. And that brings this video to a close. Thank you for joining in. As always, feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comment section below. A like, a subscription or any kind of feedback is always appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.